Hi guys, so I'm not feeling my best today, I probably also look a bit rough, so what I thought we would do is just go through all the books that I've read in January, February and March. It wasn't enough to make a dedicated wrapper for each of those months, so I didn't, but it's now also quite a lot of books, so I think I'm just gonna go through them quite quickly. I think most of them are also quite well known on booktube anyway. So most of them I'm not going to go into a summary or anything like that and just sort of give you my condensed thoughts. So the first book that I finished this year, I started this in 2019, but I didn't finish it until 2020, was Red, Russian and Royal Blue, which I don't know. I don't really give star ratings, but if I did it would probably be five stars. I had a blast with it. It was super funny, but also really deep. I think it was the right time for me to read this. And I loved it, and I'm definitely going to reread it. I also annotated a whole lot, which is really fun to go back and read. And yeah, no, it was great, and I love it. The next one was A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers, which is the second part in the White Fairy series, although they're not necessarily interconnected. If you want to avoid spoilers for the first one, you should probably read the first one first before you read this one. And it was really good. It had a lot of really interesting philosophical discussions. So for example, talking about AI and what we consider a sanctioned being and like what is a person, that sort of stuff. I also still love the world building and like the world with all its variety and like family dynamics and that sort of stuff. I just, yeah, I think it's amazing. And I, I applaud Becky Chambers for for her creativity in imagining all of that and I can't wait to read the rest of the series. I have the third book on my shelves and I'm going to read it soon. And I'm also reading another book by her, so I'm going to talk about that more in April. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It was very, like, it wasn't the sort of sci-fi you would expect, maybe, because it was a lot about the person, the individual person and their thoughts. So it was good, and I loved it. The next one, which is also the only one that I actually didn't actually finish, was Specific Languages and Introduction by John Lynch. So it's a, it's a non-fiction book, clearly, about Pacific languages and the languages within the Pacific, the different uh, language families, I think, even, that are present there. I found it incredibly fascinating. I find all of the languages really interesting, the way migration carried them through and the diversity within them and all of that. That's why I got this book. And um, there's definitely a big section on grammar that I was too exhausted to read, so I read about half of the book. But um, I still find it really interesting and I'm not mad that I didn't finish it. I might go back to it. I think he intended it to appeal both to novices as well as people who are more in the topic and, and know more about it. Which I belong to that first group, so I'm a bit overwhelmed with like 100 pages on grammar. <laughs> but it was still really interesting, and I'm really interested in reading more of this topic as well, so I'm gonna keep it and refer back to it whenever. I don't know what for exactly, but I might, so. The next book is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which has also been talked about enough, I think. Uh, it's, it, yeah, it's just really, really nice. I, it's not the thing I would usually read, I think. Usually, just sort of contemporary stuff isn't my forte. Um, but this was really sweet. I think it was, there were s some things that were discussed that I don't really know a lot about, so it was really interesting to see that put into words and for me to be able to understand it a bit better, as well as just following them along and, and seeing their relationship devol uh, evolve and, and uh, them struggling with their demons, but also just connecting and I don't know. It was, it was, it's hard to put into words. There were definitely some sections where I was like, this is really like profound, like, if I annotated I would definitely like underline this because this is a really interesting way to put it or a really like heart hitting kind of sentence or section or something like that. So really liked it for that as well. And yeah. Also like all the books you're seeing now I'm keeping. There's two that I read that I'm not keeping. One of them is uh from Kerstin das M. Mensch werden wollte. It's a very sort of middle grade sort of fable or fairy tale almost kind of story 
with like very convenient solutions and stuff like that, you know. Um, it was nice. I read it within like a day. I don't have any strong feelings about it, so. Hesitant Caroline here. I actually forgot to tell you about a book I read. That was the last one that I read in March, or finished in March, which was The Kampf um Goliwe. The translation to that, I think, is The Battle of Goliwe? Pro Goliwe? Something like that. It's a middle grade fantasy story. Quite a lot of mystery, but also a lot of sort of convenience and stuff like that. Um, very middle grade also in the solution and everything. And it's just not something I'm going to return to. It was okay. Middle of the road for me, I guess. I pushed through it though, so like that tells you enough. It wasn't, it wasn't boring enough <laughs> for me to, to put it down. I wanted to see what the mystery was and, and how everything got solved. The next book I read was I Turned Fast Eyes by No So, which is, um, which it means Germany black, black and white, yeah, and it's about racism in Germany, also non-fiction. It's hard to read because I'm a white person in Germany, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know, and there's also stuff that I knew, or stuff where I had an inclination that, you know, there might be more to it than I know. So I learned a lot, I recommend any person who speaks German reads this, especially white people, obviously. It's really cleverly written and really like poignant and funny, as well as still not holding back with the truth, I would say. Yeah, really interesting. I learned a lot and I would definitely recommend you read it if you do speak German, because I don't think there's a translation available. This is also about German history with racism and colonialism and all of that, a lot of which I didn't know about. Don't know whose fault that is. Partially mine. Also, maybe my history lessons should have included more of that. But yeah, the next book I read is another fiction, which is Lola by Melissa Scrivener Love, uh, which is also in German, you can't really tell. It's a thriller. <laughs> I can read. And it's about this young woman who is the secret leader of a small gang. Yeah. And sort of her struggle within that male-dominated field, almost, and sort of her trying to get them high up in the food chain and and also about trauma and it's, there is quite brutal stuff in here so like definitely physical like harm, very violent actions so be aware um, if that's something you don't like reading about. I was definitely a bit squeamish at times, so I was like, mm, like, mm, did I need that graphic description? Probably not. But this is the first in the series and I'm curious to see where it goes. It's really interesting because you don't really connect with the main character, at least I didn't, because she's very calculating and very driven. You do develop an understanding for her specific morals and also an understanding for why she's doing what she's doing, which is not entirely unreasonable. And like it describes a bit more of the so socioeconomic reasons that she might be in a gang, and and all of that. Which, yeah, I think that's that's also really interesting to consider. And um, I'm gonna see how what the rest of the series. I don't know how how many books there are actually. I know there's a second book out, but I don't know if that's the last one or if there's more. But yeah, I'm really interested to see where it goes. The next one is Moon Kapitana Himmel by. Laurie Nelson Spielman, yeah, and um, the English title is The Life List, and this book, so there's some sections or some aspects of it where I'm like, was that necessary? Maybe a bit too much romance, maybe a bit too much convenient sort of accidents, maybe that there was some, some parts where I was like, is this of white savior behavior is this black trauma porn maybe P probably i don't know felt a bit iffy about that um it still made me cry in the beginning but in the middle but in the end so there's that but yeah be aware of those aforementioned factors if you want to read those a lot of the books actually that i've been reading are about people who are or seem to be in their like 20s so since this is about i think a woman in her 30s in like like who's fully in her working life i maybe could also could relate a little less so 
you know, that was a factor. I don't know. It was okay. And I cried. Make of that what you will. Speaking about books that made me cry, we have The Success of Mizuharita by John Green, The Fault in the Stars. The YA romance bit of it was a bit like, it was, yeah, I mean, I'm not a teenager anymore and I'm not quite sure that I would behave the same way. The last bit, I don't even know how many pages, completely destroyed me. I knew what was coming. I had read part of the book before and I knew the ending and it still destroyed me. But I think the discussion, especially of the, the grief portion, I guess also like being sick and never really being able to recover is really like interesting. Not easy, but yeah, quite, quite interesting. Cause I think it's something we don't really like to think about. So yeah, it was, I hesitate to say nice, but yeah, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, but I did, and I'm going to keep it for the times when I just really want to bawl my ass out for a couple of hours, you know, yeah, that's that, and I'll hopefully see you sooner rather than later if I manage to make videos more consistently, will I, we'll see, but I hope you enjoy your April and I'll see you soon.